Okay, so let, let's start, and then you know, if someone else joins, well, you know, he can he can watch the recording. So um, this is going to be cohort two, uh, the second group that is trying to finish this uh, uh, this textbook, uh, the textbook by Handman, uh, Australian guy, the teacher, professor, uh, called Forecasting Principles and Practice. Uh, one of the things that uh, I don't know if you have you know, uh, get a peek at the book. The book is uh, is very academic, okay? You know, it's very oriented to uh, uh, colleges and universities. So one of the uh, strengths that it has is that it's tried to explain the theory and then gives you a lot of exercises, okay? So one of the, uh, we discuss, and we can discuss this in the methodology, but one of the things that we can do is, you know, just present the theory of one chapter and then in the next session, do some exercises, okay? I can post, you know, which are the exercises that I recommend to do and then we can share because in that practice, then you will find that the theory sometimes doesn't, you know, fit <laughs> into every situation. So you have to figure out how to, you know, how to do it. I think there's another person, Andres. Let me, let me give you some time so he can connect. It's coming, it's coming. <laughs> okay, apparently he's still, probably the internet is slow or he's having some, some difficulties. But uh, let, let, let me keep going. So, you know, just mind that, that, uh, you know, that the book is for more for teaching uh, purposes. It's more about the founda foundation of forecasting. And we're going to see that this is the basic, okay? If you want to continue exploring and, you know, do a Kaggle competition or go to more advanced, then you need, you know, you need other, other resources. So this is a good book to start dealing with a time series, okay? Uh, Andres. Hello, can you hear us? Uh, I'm trying to, can you hear me? Uh, yes, I can hear you perfectly. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah, I'm trying to figure yes. out what's going on with my system. Sorry, I, I, you would think that right, by yeah. now. I, I was watching that, you know, you had a little problem there, you know, just to get in to the Zoom. But uh, we're glad we're, we're, you're here with us. Thank you. <laughs> Great, just okay. give me one second. I'll try to. Sure. Hey, there you go. Oh, there you go. That seems to be working. Yeah, like I said. Um, <clears throat> um, I, I usually, you know, in I, I, I have 10 years experience of uh, teaching, you know, in a, in a college setting. So, you know, most of the time in the first, uh, you know, day of class, I let the students, you know, share a little bit of yourselves. I know Federica because Federica has been facilitating uh, some other book clubs that have been, you know, participating. So, uh, if you want, Federica, just give us a little bit of uh, of bio for Andres' benefit, and then you know, I'll let you Andres, you know, take it over there. Okay. Sure. Thank you. So I'm glad to be here. Um, as Ricardo said, uh, we uh, uh, followed a couple of uh, other book clubs, uh, uh, which were uh, were very interesting. And uh, so uh, about me, uh, I am a statistician and a naturally. Uh, I work on research on uh, uh, mainly uh, researching um, within um, the health environment, let's say like that. So I'm a collaborator with the HME uh, um, and a reviewer, basically for health studies and uh, uh, I'm, I'm a, an R enthusiast. So I'm starting doing uh, prog uh, R programming uh, since about three years ago, uh, or 
or something like that. So since the pandemic started and I got in love with that. So now I stick with it and I don't, I can't I can do anything else. Uh, and I do book clubs. So basically more or less is, is this. Thank you, Federica. Uh, yeah, I'm from Italy. Uh, yes. my name is <laughs> well, you're from Rome, you know, not only from Italy, from Rome. <laughs> Yes, yeah, very important. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, th thank you, Federica. You know, for that uh, uh, extra introduction. Uh, Andres, can you give us a little bit of uh, you know of uh, your interests and you know, what are you doing? Yes, absolutely. So my name is Andres. I'm originally from Colombia, but I live in Washington D.C. Um, I work at I work at the World Bank. And I've been at the bank for almost six years. And uh, before then, I used to be at the IMF. Um, I am an economist, uh, well, development economist by training. Um, and most of my work has been, you know, the most of my career has been on models and, you know, macroeconomic models and big financial stability models of, uh, and, and such. And surprisingly enough, even though the IMF and the World Bank are such um, large and, and one would expect uh, cutting edge in, in research institutions, most of the work that I've done throughout my life has been in Excel. So um, that, has, that has changed, but um, unfortunately, it's not an institutional change. It has been my own change. So uh, I started to change to translate some of the models that I've designed and that I work with uh, into R. I started doing that a few years ago. Um, and unfortunately, whenever you leave um, a programming language for a few months, when you come back, it has like has been the case with R and R Studio or now posit or everything has changed everything is new the packages that i use either don't work or the pipe <laughs> is not even right. the same so, you know there's a, new pipe. there's a new pipe now yeah <laughs> exactly so things are things have dramatically changed so i um i want to keep up keep up with with uh, with it and this is my first book club i've been i've been in, in the community and in the slack channel for a long time and i've been meaning to to Join one of the of the book clubs for a while, but this is this is it's very. I'm, I'm lucky in that this is the 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 the, the first one that I can join right at the beginning. So the timing is perfect. Um, so I'm very happy to be here. I'm very I'm mean, very much lo looking forward to learning. And um, if there's anything I can share, <laughs> I, I, I hope. Uh, I oh hope yeah, <laughs> I, I I know that you have you have been exposed to a lot of you know data you know, in general from, you know, for your background. So if you can, you know, this is public, of course, if you can share, you know, some of the exercises and share, you know, some of the data sets, that would be great. Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's so, uh, so we yeah, can, we get exposed yeah. to different, you know, different domains, uh, different settings. Okay. You know, not, not, you're not so, uh, so subscribed only to do the data sets that the book, you know, shows us. We can also you know, explore other, other data sets, and I have done it in, in the book club. Sometimes, you know, uh, there's some data sets that are very old or they are not, you know, they're very traditional. You know, for example, if you if you start uh, uh, a career, you know, studying R, for example, studying statistics, uh, you're going to get across with the empty cars, the iris, the Boston data set, you know, all those. Mm -hmm. And those are, you know, good for, uh, you, you know, get, get to know a couple of commands, but to, continue, you know, to, uh, to advance, then you have to get exposed uh, to different settings, different data sets and, and different domains. Okay, so uh, th thanks for the introduction, Andres, and, and welcome. Uh, this is a space, and, um, you know, Federica also has been a great uh, facilitator in the book clubs that, that we have shared. Um, this is a space for uh, experimenting, okay? Because sometimes, you know, when you're in your workplace or maybe you are in a competition, well, you know, you don't share, you know, that much, okay? Because, you know, you want to keep things for yourself. Here, 
here, this is more a teaching experience, okay? So you get the most if you, you know, deliver the most, right? You know, you deliver, you know, and, and you get the most. So uh, that's my, uh, you know, that, that's, my, that's my advice. And we have, you know, other resources that personally I have used in other Slack channels, for example. Uh, so some of the questions that maybe we cannot answer, you know, between ourselves that we can refer to other Slack channels. In fact, you know, there's a good one. I'm going to post it in the, in the chat. Uh, there's a good one called Business Science. Okay, I don't know if you are related to that. It's the site by Mac, Matt Danko. He has dedicated a lot of time, all right? And he comes from Excel, okay, Andres? So, you know, you he when you mentioned about that, about, you know, all the models in Excel and then, you know, try to go to R, that was his experience, you know, when he was working in sales. Because Excel, at a certain moment, is going to be constrained, right? You know, you cannot get big data there. Uh, you only have certain functions that you can do, okay? Now Excel is getting more, it's getting more sophisticated because now Python is getting into Excel. I don't know if you know that, but still it's a spreadsheet, right? In R or even in Python, uh, you, the canvas is infinite. I mean, you, know, you can have terabytes uh, of data, you know, with the right tools, okay? you know, to, to, to model. So uh, business science is a good place uh, you know, to learn more about the advanced techniques of a, a time series, because Matt Danko has created packages for R, okay, using the tidy models framework to deal with a time series, something that you're not going to see in this book, okay, because this book is very base R, uh, base R, and, and, and this uh, author, Inman, uh, he has created uh, packages, okay, but it's you know at, at the at, at the more traditional statistic level, and you'll see you know what I what I say when I, I get you into the chapters. Okay, if you want to go a little bit you know advanced, a little bit higher level, then you have to see other, uh, you know you, you have to get other resources. So just to finish my introduction, um, I'm I'm living in Orlando right now. I moved here in 2006. I'm originally from Puerto Rico. Okay, uh, my you know, regular job is not really programming. It's more uh, appraising. I do appraisers for aircraft, um, machinery and equipment in general, yellow iron. Also, we do a couple of boats, you know, uh, depending on, you know, on what kind of a vessel are we talking about, uh, that kind of thing. Okay, so that's my, basically my regular job. But I was always enthusiast to learn R because of my background as an industrial engineer. Okay, you know, you, I got a lot of statistics uh, uh, background. So R was always in that, you know, in, 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 in my view, in my rare view. And in 2019, then I started in earnest, you know, to learn R. Okay, so I have about uh, three years and I did a project, but not working with R. I was working with, uh, with Python, okay? But, you know, R is always, you know, it, it's kind of uh, people, people that like Excel, they don't want to give it up, but they always, you know, have a place in their heart, right? For for Excel, and the same with R. You know, I, I prefer to do a, a couple of things, especially exploratory analysis, time series, and all that in R than in Python. But Python is getting, you know, is it's getting there. I mean, it's uh, there's a lot of, uh, uh, you know, there's a lot of research and uh, improvement in that. And of course, Python has still has more variety in terms of production. In terms of deployment, you have a lot of things. In R, usually you go through the shiny, right? Through the shiny uh, 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 thing. But R also is getting, is getting there. You know, they're uh, positive right now. One of the challenges that they have is they want to diversify, you know, the, the deployment of models, okay? So quick, uh, this is the book, Forecasting Principles and Practice. Uh, that's the third edition, okay? Because there's a second edition, don't use that. Use the third edition. And the authors are, are Rob Henman. I hope I pronounced it well. He's an Australian. And George Athanasopoulos. Okay. So that's the book that we're going to be, you know, studying uh, chapter by chapter. Okay. So the agenda for, for today. Uh, let's talk about the resources that we have. The main resource, of course, is the book, but there are other resources that you can, you can use. 
And because this is the second cohort, I was a member of the first one, the first cohort, but we didn't finish, okay? We didn't get to the, you know, to the finishing line. So I hope this cohort, you can use some of the, you know, uh, path that we already, you know, uh, trail you know, with, with the book, but then I would like, you know, to have the commitment from you guys to try to get it to the finish line, because that's going to be our major uh, contribution. Okay. So we're going to talk about resources. Also, we're going to talk about session methodology and Andres. Uh, you can see the, the recording because the recording I already talked a little bit about system methodology, but I will repeat it, okay? But, you know, just to be aware that, you know, we discussed some things preliminary before, you know, you join us, okay? And then we will start chapter one discussion. Probably we won't finish, although it's a short chapter, but I want, since Andres also, for the benefit of Andres, he's, this is the first book club, that you have a good foundation on how we do how we do things, okay? And if you have any questions or, you know, hey, you know, I really don't know, you know, how to how to do the, the GitHub, you know, commit and all that, there are resources and, and we can help, okay? Because we have been, we have been there. <laughs> we have been there, you know, where, where you are, okay? So let's talk about resources. So the first resource that you should bookmark in, you know, your favorite browser or uh, online, you know, virtual browser, is the textbook link. And this is the textbook link, okay? The otext.com slash FPP3. Because as I mentioned there, there's a second edition still there, apparently for, you know, academic purposes, but we're going to be using the third edition. Make sure that you have the third edition. Okay, so let me give you a glimpse of what we're talking about. Let me see, okay. So this is the, okay, this is the chapter one. Okay, so this is the main page of that data link. Uh, it gives you an introduction, that's, that's the author, gives you a video, gives you an introduction. And then as you can see, there are 13 chapters, but one chapter, we already you know, went through this process, one chapter is called judgmental forecast. Uh, that chapter talks about what they call qualitative forecasting. In other words, when there's no data available or the data is such bad quality data that you know, it's almost unusable. That one we skip, okay? In our core, we decided to skip because you know, we wanted to make sure that we understand you know, the, the quantitative uh, forecasting, which is the one that, you know, that, that uses data, but, but, if you want to discuss it, uh, we can, okay? Just, you know, uh, ma make sure that you understand that judgmental forecasting is not based on data. It's based on other, you know, other parameters that forecasters use when the data is not available, the data is unusable, okay? So if we decide to skip that one, then we have 12 chapters, okay? And the chapters covers different topics, for example, what is, it, what, what is a time series? Uh, what are the tools uh, to analyze a time series? They are, you know, they go about decomposition, they go about autocorrelation and all that. Then there's some models, okay? Uh, some of the traditional models that are used for time series forecasting are uh, exponential time smoothing, ARIMA models, and other models that the, that, the, that the book discuss. And then, you know, some, advanced uh, model. That's basically in a nutshell, that's basically the scope of the book. Then going back to, to the resources. So you, you have link for the textbook, right? So make sure that you have it, you bookmark it, et cetera. Let me make it easier for you. Okay, thank you, Federica. I was going to post the, the link. <laughs> okay, so I'll, I'll be posting as, as, as I discuss the links, I'll be posting in the chat. Okay. Okay, the second resource is um, the GitHub repository for each of the chapters of the textbook. Uh, and it's also created by the authors. Re remember, this is like academic. So they're giving all the tools for the students 
so that they can keep up, you know, with the with the you know with the pedag pedagogy. So this one, let me go back to my uh, link. Okay, so this one is a GitHub repository. Everybody understands what is GitHub, right? How anyone anyone has an experience with GitHub, etc. I know just it's not new. Okay, good. So this is the repository. Let me put it in the chat. Um, okay, let me see chat here. Okay. Okay, here we go. So this one, I have used it, you know, me personally, I have used it to try to get some of the information that eventually I'm going to use in the presentation. Okay. Since the book has a lot of theory, uh, my suggestion, and it's the suggestion of the, you know, of, of John, you know, the one that is administering in the book clubs, is that you try to uh, make some notes, okay? Make some notes, some bullets, and those are the ones that are going to be included in the, you know, in the, in the, in the book that we're going to be creating for the benefit of, of, of the other cohorts that are coming. So try to be kind of concise and summarize, okay? That, that's my, that's my uh, advice. But you have the information from the textbook in the slides, and in the slides, there's a lot of you know format for uh, uh, as bu bullet points because usually what the author does is that he uses these slides to then you know uh, develop develop the learning experience in the classroom. Okay, so in other words, you don't have to reinvent the wheel here. You don't have to go from the book to a presentation. You can use this resource. Okay, and it's, I believe it's very up to date. The last update was October uh, 19. So the authors, you know, try to keep up, you know, with, uh, you know, any errors or any, anything that they, they have to add to data, real data. So that's the second resource. The first resource, the textbook, second resource, the GitHub, okay, for the slides. Then, third resource, the book club notes, okay? Because there was a previous core, we already created certain, you know, certain information there, okay, in the in the book club. So uh, the book down is right here. Okay, this is the the compendium or or the collection of presentations that we have done to, you know, benefit ourselves and also the other persons that are going to be doing, you know, uh, 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 another study, okay? So this one, you have to go, let me see. Hey. Hi. Hello. Sorry, sorry for coming late. You know, I was jump back on some of these. Okay, but uh, welcome, welcome. Uh, Abdul, right? Abdul? Yeah, yeah, Abdul, yeah. Abdul, yes. Uh, welcome. Yeah. Uh, I'm just explaining some of the resources that we're going to use, but if you want, because it's, this is recorded, you can go back. Okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, sure. I'll, the whole, the sure, I'll, do, that. I'll do that. You, you can just continue. I'll, I'll get, I'll catch up. Okay. So, but yeah. if you have any questions, you know, please, you know, don't, don't hesitate, right? Yeah. Okay. So the book club, let me see. Uh, let me go here to my, to my GitHub. It's just to show you, you know, more or less where, where it is. Uh, let me see. Okay. This is my repositories, right? Okay. Uh, book club. Okay. Okay. So this is the GitHub. Everyone can see it? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, let me let me insert it in the chat again. Okay, this is the repository for the GitHub. And did you notice, you know, when I enter my GitHub, I, I look for it right in book club, but then the first the first thing that you saw was a fork. In other words, I'm making a copy of that GitHub. In other words, I'm not interacting directly, you know, with that with that repository. What I do is that I make a fork and then use that fork to do the changes that I, I want to do. And then 
committed to the GitHub you know, to push those updates. Uh, there's a big explanation here on how to you know, do that in, the, you know, in, in, your own, in your own fork on your own copy. But that's basically good practice, okay? Because the problem is that if you link directly with that repository, anything that you do is going to be you know, posted there. Okay, so you need to give John, John Harmon, you know, a second opinion there. So he can, you know, make some modifications if needs it, and then, you know, post it to the, to the production, to the production uh, uh, site. All right. So uh, if you have any, you know, any, any problems with that or any doubts, you know, please, you know, let, let, let us know and, you know, we'll try to, try to guide you. Also, R, if you are using R Studio, R Studio makes it very easy uh, to do this. Okay, you just have to link in the in the preferences, in the in the tools, the global options. You have to link this repository, your repository, with you know the uh, the, the R Studio environment. Okay, uh, maybe I, ca I can give you a video. I can give you a video on how to do it. But usually, R Studio that's the way to do it, and then you don't have to go to let's say uh, you know your terminal, uh, you know, to key in the the commands because sometimes the git commands are you know kind of you know nasty. <laughs> so uh, you know it, it makes it easy. It makes it easier you know to R Studio. If you need that, you know, I can post you a video. There's a lot of information as to how to link the your R environment with the uh, the, the the GitHub a GitHub repository. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that would be that would be awesome. I think if you could share something on that, I think that would be great. Okay, so what I'm going to do is after we finish, okay, yeah. I'm going yeah. to because I missed lunch because I was I, I thought it was at one, so I missed lunch. So I'm kind of you know hungry right now. <laughs> so after that, after I you know uh, uh, clear my belly, <laughs> my belly, um, what I'm going to do is that I post a video on the Slack channel of the, of yeah. the book club. A video yeah. on how to tie, how to you know interact our studio with the with uh, GitHub any GitHub repository, and it will benefit for anything you know that that you do. Okay, Afrika. Yeah, yeah. I I like to add um, one um, little thing because yesterday we, we started a new book club uh, named "What They Forgot to Teach You About R," and. Uh -huh. um, it's led by uh, John Armon, and right, right. Uh, he started uh, like introducing uh, exactly those things: uh, how to make um, a fork, how to use uh, uh, use this, and uh, um, so connect uh, GitHub with R, and then uh, uh, be able to like make a fork, uh, the book club repository, make the changes and everything. And it, there's already a video being posted uh, on YouTube. So I'll put the link in the chat, but you find it in the, in the Slack. Uh, this is uh, the, the book club, uh, uh, what they forgot to teach you about R. Okay, so I put this. Uh, so you can. Uh, okay. So also, uh, Federica, if you, if you can post also in the Slack channel, okay. So we don't have to go, you know, to the chat log, okay. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, that that will be beneficial because, uh, you know, uh, this is not the first time you're going to be interacting with GitHub. I mean, GitHub is the place, you know, where almost every software developer, you know, goes to, you know, post post things. Okay, so uh, it will it will be something that it would you know it will transcend uh, this uh, this book club for for your benefit. Okay. Um, okay, so let let's review. We have the textbook link. We have the GitHub repository for the slides uh, that comes from the information from the textbook that it will help you to summarize. Okay, the information that are going to be presenting and then you know. Uh, push it to the to the book, to the book club notes. Then we have we have the book. Okay, so you're ready at least in the first. I think we stop in the eighth uh, chapter, if I don't remember. We stop in the eighth. So at least from the first one, 
And the first one, I'm going to be doing it because the first one is still not there. So I'm going to be doing that so we can complete the work. So from the second one, skipping the sixth to the eighth, you already have some material there. Maybe what, what you can, can do is, you know, add a couple of things that maybe we, you know, we skip or bring a, a new data set, you know, to the mix, okay? But some of the work is already done. It's not that you're going to be starting in zero, okay? All right, so let's continue with the resources. Okay. All right. So these resources are not related, you know, to the book, nor related to, uh, you know, the, the book club itself. These are extra materials that maybe will give you more insight on the topics that we're going to be discussing. The first one, and this is one that I found out from another, you know, from another, uh, from another Slack channel. This one is from the, the YouTube channel of Abhishek Thakur. Okay, maybe you don't know the name, but if you are in the Kaggle, you know, uh, competition, Abhishek Thakur is, you know, one of the first, I think it was the first grandmaster on all the four uh, categories that they have, you know, for grandmaster. I mean, he's a, in Kaggle, he's a legend. <laughs> you, you talk about Abhishek Thakur and I say, whoa, what? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, whoa, you know, stop it, stop, stop the presses there. Okay, so in his channel, he has a collection, okay, of time series videos, each an hour each. It's about, I think it's about 12, okay, collection, that it goes specifically into each of the, you know, of the analysis, the time series method, cross-validation, all that you can think of about time series and how, you know, a Kaggle, you know, grandmaster approaches a, a, a time series problem. Okay, so this one is really, you know, when when you already have some knowledge of the theory of the book, this one really, you know, gives you a round up. Okay, and it gives you a little more information about how to attack different problems that you can find. Okay, let me put an example, you know, very quickly because we already. We already got, got this, this problem. Uh, a time series is some data that you have with a temporal component, right? It could be days, it could be hours, it could be minutes, but it's in a, in a sequence. Okay. One of the things that you're going to find is that sometimes there's some missing information in those sequences. Okay. It could be on purpose, for example. If you have a business and they're recording the daily sales of the business and they don't open on Sunday, like uh, for example, the, 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 there's, a, there's, a, there's a franchise here called Chick-fil-A, uh, they don't open on Sundays, okay? That's part of their policy. So you'll have Monday to Saturday data and then Sunday, it doesn't, it doesn't appear. So how do you deal with that? Okay, do you create some data to input the Sunday or you do something to try to accommodate that missing data but still have a string of the time series? So that's one of the things that you have to you know, manage in that, in that raw data because it's going to happen. For example, in the COVID pandemic, we know that some businesses, they couldn't operate, restaurants, retail, et cetera, because there were some lockdowns. So how do you deal with that? Okay, so that's one of the things that that video is going to tell you. Okay, in terms of how to deal with uh, missing data, really missing data in a time series. That usually in the in the textbook there's a couple examples, but it's not really uh, addressed. You know, in in, in detail in, in that sense. It's it's up to you to you know to deal with. It. So. Excellent, excellent uh, uh, resource. Okay, for you to keep keep up with the with the time series. Let me check it here. Okay, uh, let me see. Uh, let me go here. 
because there's something good. Okay, so this is this is one of them. Okay, the the person Abhishek is the one that is facilitating the uh, you know the, the recording, but the one that is really the expert that is really in time series is called Conrad. Okay, and let me give you the link. So you have it for. Let's see what. Uh, no, uh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Uh, where are you? Okay. Let me give you. Uh, let me see. see. Uh, it was a lot of learning. Okay. Let me do this. Share. Copy. There you go. Now we can. Now we can do it. Um. There you go. So that's the link, and it's a total of uh, I I see here eight, but there are more because I know that there there's one that talks about cross validation, that it was very informative because there was a doubt in one of the chapters about cross validation and the possibility of uh, data, um, uh, you know, uh, the the data co contamination that can go uh, with the with the, with the cross validation okay uh, data leaking that that's the that, that's the term okay then uh, i also want to give you uh, access also to my personal repository because in the book clubs i have the you know the practice of dividing the information that i'm going to be committing to the book club notes, and then separating my own uh, data for, for my repository. The thing is that, remember, the book club notes are not yours, okay? Those are you know governed by our 4DS, and they're going to be changing because there's going to be a new cohort probably, and they're going to be changing that information. So if you want to keep what you did, then you create your own repository and then use it as kind of a backup or as a starting or staging place. So then you can move things around, okay? And in this one, the benefit that you're going to have is that we already did some exercises on the chapters. So you can compare, you can do the exercise and you can compare if we reach the same thing or they're different, then we can start a discussion. We say, okay, what is yours different? Uh, I did this, you did that. What is the what, you know what, what is 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 that a good practice or is has to be tailored? So this one, uh, it can help you with the exercises. Okay, so let me go here. This is the link. Okay, and this is my personal repository. You can fork it. Okay, you can make your own copy, and then you know, uh, sh share it. Uh, because remember, the good thing about GitHub is that uh, nothing is lost in GitHub. You can go back. If you make a mistake, you can go back, you know, kind of, you know, doing like a like a time timeline, you know, regression there, uh, going back in time and then extract the version that you, you know, that, that, that you need. So uh, that's one of the things because GitHub is basically a versioning uh, tool. For, for documents. Okay, so we have the YouTube videos, we have uh, my personal repository, and then I want to give you some, uh, you know, introduction to what is called the Model Time R Package. The Model Time R Package was created by Matt Danko, the guy that I mentioned uh, with Business Time. Uh, he has dedicated a lot of effort to try to make it easier for business analysts to do machine learning. So the model time package not only is in R, but it's also structured so that it works very well with the tidy models framework. Okay, you know, in other words, it's not base R, it's the tidy models, but uh, uh, tailored for uh, time series uh, forecast. Okay, and this is the this is the page uh, getting started with uh, model time. Uh, one of the things, because I already did some of the exercises that the book, you know, uh, asked us to do, 
what I could do also is try to give you the version of those ex or some of those exercises using model time. Okay, so also you have, you know, the 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 the, the traditional version that, that the author is using, but also the model time version. And since I've been I've been studying that you know package, you know, with the time series, uh, uh, you know, learning learning course that comes with it. Um, it's, it's easier. It's easier because depending on the modeling, you need several, test several models for the same time series to make sure that you get the best model. With tidy models, a model time is so much easier, okay? To make sure that you have the best models for those time series. And when I talk about time series, I talk about plural here because it's easy to get one time series and then you know do different models and then extract you know the best model by a, by a metric rmse mape whatever but when you have a thousand time series okay a thousand time series imagine retail a thousand products each one with their own you know quirks now it's getting a little bit complicated right you know to do you know, which is going to be the best model for each one of those time series. Maybe one is exponential moving, maybe another one is XG boost, maybe another one is deep R, uh, deep learning uh, uh, algorithm. So you have to scale. That's what I'm saying, that's a scale. Model time gives you the tools for that, okay? Because the author made the effort from the Kaggle competitions to try to put everything that he learned into those packages. Okay, so I think that's going to be a plus for you guys and also a plus for me because I want to practice, <laughs> you know, uh, uh, model time too. Okay, so any questions so far? Any questions? Are you still with me? <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Every, everyone okay? Okay. Yeah. Remember, Abdul, uh, just check the beginning. The beginning yeah, of the yeah. Video. Show, show, I'll catch up. Show. Just in case they say, what the hell is Ricardo? <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. So uh, those are the resources. I mean, there are a ton of resources there, but for me, I, I think you're, you're going to be okay with those resources that I'm, you know, recommending. All right, so I, I explained this at, at, at first, but let, let me, let me uh, you know, emphasize uh, this. Uh, the way that the the, the, la the previous cohort did, you know, uh, did the study is that uh, each each of the members is going to have maybe two uh, chapters, at least two, maybe three chapters. Okay. So what we did was discussing the first session, the theory, right? You know, discuss the chapter, discuss all the material that the chapter, you know, is is is, is addressing. Then in the next session, we went to the exercise because this is an academic textbook. So he already has exercises included there. And we don't have to do all of them, okay? As, you know, for example, you know, we recommend that, okay, let's do th these three exercises. Maybe we can do other exercises that we didn't choose, okay? But at least it gives you the, the practical uh, per practical training to try to deal with situations that sometimes the theory it kind of you know doesn't fit right okay especially when you have those missing uh, those missing elements those those missing data what, what do you do uh, with, with it with it so if that's okay uh, that's that would be the way that I, I would approach uh, you know the learning of the of the of, of the book because remember this is not a race you know we, we don't have a deadline. Uh, you know, to finish the book. So the most that we can get from it, because, you know, you're spending, you know, an hour a week, uh, you know, here with us, the most that you can get with it, the most that you're going to be, you know, able to, you know, to, to, to learn and to maybe apply uh, to a job or a future job, okay? Because time series is hot in the, in the machine learning area. If you don't know time series, you know, you basically have 60 or 70% of your job offers just chopped up. Time series is, is, is basic for, for, for business, okay? 
so uh, if you agree with this, with that, we can we can go with that, okay? Or some other alternative. But I think you know, uh, from from the perspective of the book, that's how the the author, you know, wants us you know to to learn from it. Okay, and remember, in my personal repository, there are already some exercises, so you can take advantage of it. I would say that. Try it on your own first, okay? Try it on your own, and then you know check it with with our with our solution. Because I know that there's a solution somewhere, you know, for these chapters. You know, if you, if you are an instructor or something, they give you the solutions. But I try not to do that, okay? Because that's you know that, that that's a temptation that I don't need, okay? And sometimes, most of the time, you learn doing mistakes. You're not going to get it 100 percent every time you learn from your mistakes, okay? Especially in coding, programming, et cetera. Why doesn't work? You know, why is it giving me this error? Okay, let's look at it. Let's, uh, you know, Google search, troubleshoot, et cetera. Okay? So, uh, so we, we, we can do that. You know, discuss the theory, and then on the next session, discuss some of the exercises. So, and, and we can... Sorry. Uh -huh. Go ahead. Yeah, sorry, Ricardo. So just so you, just to confirm, so mm -hmm. we're not dividing the each session in two, but we're actually devoting one entire session to theory, and then the following session, the entire session, and, and exercise. On Is exercise. Yeah. Great. Okay. Got it. Correct. So okay. You are going to have for each chapter, basically, you are going to have two sessions: one for theory, discuss the theory of the book, and then one for uh, selected exercises. Yeah, so like in a sense, we have like uh, two weeks for each chapter. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's enough to go through the, the material. And, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah, and, yeah, and, yeah. It, and it gives you some, you know, pause in terms of it's not all theory that you're yeah, learning. Yeah. You're yeah. also learning how to apply it, you know, to the exercises and also to new data sets that maybe you, you are interested in bringing up. Okay. For example, I'm, I'm, I'm doing... Uh, a study for an article on the Iowa liquor sales, okay, uh, data set that is, you know, is public because the state of Iowa in the United States apparently has, has a law, you know, has a statute or something that they have to record, you know, all the liquor stores have to record the sales daily, <laughs> okay? So they have this huge database of all, and you have you have vodka, you have gin, you know, they segmented by products, by stores, by counties, etc. So I'm doing that to apply model type. Okay. To apply what, what, what you're going to see is called hierarchical forecasting because he has a hierarchy, right? You know, you got the state, you have the county, you have the, the, the liquor stores, and then you have the retail sales and also the products in between. Okay. So that's something that maybe, you know, in that chapter, I could, you know, I could talk about instead of, you know, the data sets that, uh, that the book is, uh, is suggesting. Okay. Good. Sure, sure, oh, sure. Good, great. good. Yeah. yeah. All righty, all righty. So that's it. Um, I have already uh, in my agenda to discuss, you know, chapter one, uh, chapter one really is the one that basically doesn't have any exercises. <laughs> okay, it only, it only has two, but it's more a discussion. So what we can do in the next session, we're, go we're going to start with the chapter number one. Uh, we're going to dis discuss one of the exercises because one of the exercises will give you some perspective of what is in general, what is forecasting uh, with, with, with time series. And then uh, we're going to be uh, working next two weeks we're going to be working with chapter two okay so i don't know if there's one uh if you have volunteer for the chapters do you know where to go you know to volunteer so i can show you okay uh let me go let me go uh, okay let me go here okay okay so this is the the channel right uh fpp book club PP in the R4DS online learning. And then what it says here is volunteer to present here on top. Okay, if you don't have pin, pin it, uh, you, can, you can pin it so it won't disappear. Okay.
everybody Do, does it have to be on the de on the desktop does it work on the phone do you know ah oh, god i don't oh, know yeah okay. i don't know maybe hmm. That's a good one. <laughs> yeah, good no, one. no, no, I can't find because it. Usually, it's... usually in Slack, I mean, I have I have the the, the tablet uh, version because you know it's mm -hmm. wired, but I haven't interact Slack with uh, with the phone. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, but I but I can I, I can check. Okay, but I'm sure, anyway. I'm sure it works. It's just I'm not. Uh, yeah. Very okay, good but, at this. Okay, if you don't have a pin, it's going to be you know uh, hidden, right? So you have to go through this area, you know, after the book club uh, cohort. You have to go to this area and then you know it it it, it, it downs you know the, the menu you know it, it it shows the menu so you go to volunteer to present and it opens a google uh, document a google uh, document okay and there you have a spreadsheet already uh you know uh created and what you can do is if you want to do uh, chapter two you write your name there or if you want to do chapter three, you write your name and so forth. Okay. And in fact, uh, uh, John, who is the person that creates this, already give you some time to do exercises, you know, for the for chapter, because that's the way we, we did it before. Okay. So, okay, what, one other thing that that uh, I don't want to miss, because we're in, we're approaching the holidays, okay, Christmas, New Year, and all that. Uh, do you think we can meet on the 12, 23 and 12, 30, December 23 and December 30? No, right? Okay, good, yeah. good, no, no. That, that's no, good. no, that's no, good. no, we can just take the holiday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, 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 I know that you were not going to say, you know, yes, you know, for some reason. <laughs> okay. Anyway, what we're going to do then is, you know, a bump that schedule. So for example, we're going to finish with chapter two for December, okay, which is, the ninth and the sixteenth, you know, the, the the theory and the exercises, and then okay, okay, a recap. December 9th, I'm going to do chapter one, right? Because that's you know the next session. Okay, so the sixteenth, we're going to start chapter two. So anyone that chooses that one, he has two weeks to prepare. Okay, then. In December 16, we're going to start discussing chapter two, theory only. And then when we come back, which is going to be probably January 13th, because January 6th is Epiphany, right? That's uh, Dia de Reyes, right? Okay, so, you know, for at least for Latin people, uh -uh, that's a no no, <laughs> that's a holiday, that's a holiday. And, All right. and, and and in Puerto Rico, it's a federal holiday. You know, the the, the post office, they don't work. Oh, yeah. There. Yeah, they, they will riot if they, they, if they were pushed to work. Okay. So let's say we'll come back the 13th. And the 13th, we're going to be discussing chapter, uh, chapter two, the exercises. Okay. So we have basically three or four weeks to digest chapter two and then do some of the exercises and discuss it and then we keep on how does that sound yeah yeah i think that sounds, sounds good. good good yeah, yeah okay so ju just to you know ju just to say save time uh does anyone wants to give it a shot at chapter two i'll do it so i can so so i can you know write your name sure i'll, I'll do it i i mean it's my first book club, so I don't know if it's a good idea <laughs> for you guys, but uh, well, okay, I can try. Yeah, no, yeah. I think it's a good idea. I think it's I last week uh, the oh. Alpha DS uh, book club. I I did my first uh, did you? Okay. But, it, but it was good because you know I had to go through this GitHub stuff and all that, which I had not been exposed to before. So it's I think it's a good idea. Give it a try. And and, and also Andres, check what we yeah. did already. Okay, you have. The material for in the book club notes, okay, is going to appear here. Uh, let me show you. The book club notes is going to appear here in book, and you should have. Oh, well, oh, that that's the book. Okay. But the share slides is the share slide. I'm sorry, share slides is going to give you the 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 link for the book club notes. Okay, so you're not starting from zero, right? Right. What you can do is. 
maybe, you know, when you read the text and you see the notes, they say, oh, but th there was something missing here, you know, that I think is important. Well, add it. That, that's part of the process, okay? Add it or maybe, you know, do some commenting, et cetera. But I suggest that you start there. But I was, I was uh, checking the notes, but it seems like nothing is nothing yeah. there, you know? So no, nothing is there? Yeah, well, it's like it's the slides. Really, the slides only the slides, the slides are empty. Only chapter four, four is, is filled. Chapter okay. Four. Okay, let me let me do that because we discussed that one. Sometimes happen when they do yeah. like presentation which are uh, in a different format, so they they right. can they, they they don't push them. So, so okay, so let me see four. if I have it in my repository. Okay, maybe I have some notes there in there in my repository that that that, that can, can help you. But since there are no notes, what you can do is check chapter four. That's the one that I did, one of the ones that I did. Check chapter four and check more or less, you know, the, the notes that, that I took from that chapter. And then it can give you an idea of how to do, you know, your notes in chapter two. Okay. Okay. But I'll 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 check in my site. In my in my repository to see what, what I have. Usually, what I have is the exercises, but maybe I have some materials that can help uh, Andres. Uh, and I'm sure. I see I see the notes I see the notes in chapter four. They're yeah, correct. They're, they're pretty good. Yeah, but I don't know if they're good. They're long, so right, I'm, right. I'm, <laughs> they're a little bit, I'm equating yeah, the two. They're, they're, <laughs> yeah, they're, they're a little bit long because I didn't want to to skim, you know, some information that I think was useful for you know technical terms. But you don't have to, you know, do it that way. Uh, I, if I do it, if I would do it again, I would try to, you know, summarize. <laughs> you no, know, I think this is good. Okay. Okay. All right. So. I'll... Okay. So let me see. Uh, where are we? Where are we? Okay. And you said December sixteen is the first session. I see my name there already. I think I may have done that. Correct. Okay. Yes, I I I I wrote it down. You know okay. your names. We already have it there, so I'm going to do. Okay, uh, I'm going to be doing. Let me see if I can. You know, I, I, I don't know how. You know, if if, if I want to destroy this, <laughs> but uh, I, I, you know, I, I'll do something to okay. try to you know get an update. Update. You know, with the calendar that we are. You know, we are agreeing. Okay. So yeah. So December sixteenth would be the first. Correct. Chapter two session, right? Chapter two first. session. Got it. Exactly. exactly. And then uh, what I'm going to do is, um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll fix it. I'll, I'll, fi I'll fix this. Okay. Because right now I have to, I have to do something like this. Uh, this is this is the introduction, right? Introduction, and then let's see. Okay. Uh, okay. You can you can even uh, link it to the previous cell and add the seven because it's. What was that? You you can link the day the the. The, um, the date to the previous cell adding okay. seven. seven adding days. seven okay let me see you, exactly and plus seven plus seven okay yeah very good if you scroll well, that. that way yeah okay so we're going to take a break let me put it here uh christmas break <laughs> yeah christmas uh new year epiphany <laughs> epiphany break okay and then we're going to be doing let me see i have to put another day here okay so it's going to be the 23rd, 1, 16, right? Or oh, 13, 13, if I'm not mistaken. Okay? Because it's from the 6th. 
Yeah. The six, seven, the thirteen. Yeah, okay. seventeen. Okay. So I think we're now have you know an updated schedule, you know, so, so that we don't we don't lose you know sight of the, of the dates. Okay. Good. And I think it, this updates automatically, right? I don't have to do a save or anything. <laughs> ah, Federica. Yeah. Oh, good. It, it updates automatically. I don't have to do uh, yeah, yeah. a save. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Sort of bigger. yeah I, I'm going to be rusting Google Sheets there. <laughs> okay. So, um, so basically, that that's it. Um, I went to post the GitHub. Uh, the to dos. I want to post the the, the the GitHub with the with the you know the link with the R Studio. There's a, a couple of good good videos there. Uh, Ferica, if you have it, also you know post it there. Um, uh, what else? I think I think we're good, right? I think so. Okay. Yeah, we're good. Right. So uh, hopefully, you know, I will see you next week, uh, yeah. same time, right? It's, it's, it's one, my, my time here, because it's two central time. Um, and watching this here, I think it's one too. Um, so we'll see you at the same time uh, next Friday. Uh, we just, you know, cover uh, chapter one, which is basically, you know, the introduction uh, for the book, um, probably one exercise. But the exercise is a discussion exercise. There's really no, no data there. Okay. All right. Fantastic. Great. Okay. Great. Yeah. Oh, great great right. to see you guys. Okay. Yeah. I know that we, 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 will, we will take it to the finish line this time. Yeah. <laughs> All, All right. right. Take care. Yeah. Have a great yeah. week. Good meeting you. Yeah. Bye. <laughs>